Acts chapter 1, 8. 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I want to read one more passage, but I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. It's found in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. It says, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. First in Acts, Jesus was speaking to the disciples. And when he finished, he was taken up into heaven. And as they watched it happen, and two angels said, This same Jesus will come again. It's a lot packed into all those verses. And then in Ephesians, Paul said, I pray that you understand the incredible power God has given to those who believe him. I want to ask a, a very simple question of you this morning. How many of you believe in God? I mean, it's okay if you don't raise your hand. So, now... I, I want to back up just for a second. Did you hear what I just read? The incredible power that you have as believers. There was a pastor in a small town called Hamilton in Indiana. It's a nice little town, a peaceful, quiet community. Except for that one time when the state police sent several officers as well as a bomb squad to the home of one of the residents there. It seems he had something in his basement he shouldn't have had. Whether he put it there or he inherited the house and found those items there, we don't know. But down in his basement, there were several boxes of dynamite. Now, Outside of the fact that it was illegal for him to own his dynamite, these boxes had passed their acceptable shelf life. You see, the active ingredients in dynamite is nitroglycerin. And while nitro is relatively stable in a stick of dynamite, when dynamite gets too old, it becomes highly unstable. According to research, if you happen to be messing around in a basement with a box of this aged dynamite, all you'd have to do is accidentally kick it, and you probably level an entire city block. And you may as well kiss yourself goodbye, too. And this man had several boxes of it in his basement. He had a dangerous explosive in the basement of his house, Here's the catch. And he had no idea what kind of power he was sitting on. The Greek word for power in both of these verses is dunamis. And that's the same word that is used to translate, guess what? Dynamite. So the point here is Paul was praying that the Christians at that time would understand what kind of dynamite power or explosive power that God had given them. Why is it that we need to know that? If we don't know, then our faith is pointless. And if we as a church don't know, then church becomes just a ritual and or just a social gathering. But it's only when we know, when we truly know the power God has given the believer, that we can begin to live like someone who has that power. 
And that in itself should give us a reason to understand the power that we have in Christ. Dynamite power. Now, I read a story about Army boot camp. Military trains its recruits and gentlemen, lady that's been in the military, you can correct me if I'm incorrect. At that time, boot camp, the military trains its recruits in how to use various weapons. One of the training sessions was teaching the soldiers how to handle grenades. To start out with, they'd hand the recruits a dummy grenade and teach them the proper technique for tossing them. And then, they grade them on how well they did and how far they threw the grenades. And then they gave the recruits, you got it, live grenades. One of the instructors noted that you'd be surprised how much further they could throw a live grenade. You got it. How much further? And so therefore, we as Christians, how much more? we can accomplish as we know what we have in Christ. So the question is, why did the recruits throw that live grenade so much further? Because they knew how much power they held in their hands. So it's important for us to know the power that Christ has in your life. Dynamic, dynamite, power. Some Christians know about God's power. Some Christians have read about it. Some Christians have been told about it. But if you truly want to know God's power, then you need to experience it. You need to put that power to use in your life. It's quite similar to buying a car. You're going, how on earth is he going to compare that to this? Never did I think that you could buy a car online. I could never buy a car online because I can't buy a car till I take it for a test drive. How many of you would buy a car without taking it for a test drive? One. I did. I have one. There it is. I've got to smell the new car smell. I gotta look at all the gadgets that I will never learn, that I will never use. I wouldn't buy it until I hear the engine, feel the power. And now I have a key in my hand, but until I get in and do what? Turn on the radio. <laughs> I knew something like that was coming. <laughs> but until I get in and turn the key on, I will never be able to experience what I have. Back to Acts 1.8. Remember it says, But you shall receive power. <laughs> Just after Jesus spoke those words and he left this earth, the disciples made their way back to Jerusalem and went to what we call the upper room and spent time in prayer. And I can't emphasize enough the importance of spending time in prayer. And as a result of what we read in Acts 1.8, the disciples Receiving that dynamite 
power. We see in Acts chapter 2, verse 40, roughly 3,000 new, be new believers came to know Christ. And then we see daily people coming to know the Lord. Now what happened next was something I believe Peter and John had watched Jesus do. But they had never done it themselves. They went to the temple to pray. That's something that they had done before. But there was a man that was there that was lame from birth. Someone took him to the gates of the temple daily to beg for food. He saw Peter and John about to go into the temple. He didn't know who they were and asked them for money for food. And Peter and John both looked at him and Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now I can picture Peter, mainly Peter, the disciple that denied even knowing Jesus at the time of the crucifixion, Peter that wouldn't even admit to a teenage girl that he knew Jesus, and now Peter and John telling a lame man to rise and walk. What a transformation in their lives. Also here in Acts, Peter preaches his first sermon. My thought, though, and my question is, what if they hadn't prayed? And then this man wouldn't have been healed. And I think Peter and John would have lived just an ordinary Christian life. A life just quite frankly, I don't want to live. I don't want to live just an ordinary Christian life. I want to have that power active in my life. 24-7. And as a result, Peter and John lived an exciting life for Christ. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. It says, many signs and wonders were done among the people. Verse 14, new believers were added to the church daily. Verse 15, people brought the sick to them, laid them in the streets, waiting for them to be prayed for. And all because of the power of God on their life. And if that wasn't enough, Acts chapter 4, verse 29. We pray, Lord, grant to your service that with all boldness they may speak the word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Lord, grant to your servants Lord, grant each one of these sitting in this room this morning that are servants of yours, that are believers of yours. Lord, grant to each one that's sitting here this morning that with all boldness they may speak the word by stretching out your hand to heal and the signs and wonders will follow each and every one of them that's sitting here this morning. I don't know about you, but I heard we have a guy that used to come here. He said, man, I'm feeling goosebumps or God bumps. <laughs> Feel. Participate. 
being active in speaking the word, in praying for it, in reaching out to others. Without hesitation, without embarrassment, without being shy about it. Lord, grant to your servants that we can all have boldness to speak his word. Paul prayed for the church that they also would see this dynamite power working in each and every one of them. And as I read the prayer, I pray for that. I pray that prayer for each one of you. That you would experience God's dynamite power in, in your life, working in your lives. That you will feel that and know that is happening in your life. I pray that each one of us will begin to live as though you have God's explosive power working in you. God's dynamite, explosive power working in you. And if you have experienced that in your life, you would be living very differently than what you are living today. 1 Peter 4, chapter 10, verse 11. Chapter 4, verses 10 and 11. As each one has received a gift, minister to it, it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as a very mouthpiece of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified. Hallelujah. When you open your mouth, when you start to talk to somebody, when you're angry, and you want to speak out of anger, I do you speak? If anyone speaks, let him speak as a very mouthpiece of God. Now, I've already said that Paul prayed that Christians would know God's power. To experience God's power, we have to believe. David ventured out against Goliath because he believed. He knew God would work through him when he faced Goliath. David ventured out, yes, David ventured out against Goliath. Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt. Because he believed. He knew without a doubt in his mind that God would lead them and guide them. They had both experienced God's power in their lives. So people will tell me, you pray. But when I pray, I don't see anything happen. So what do you do? Do you quit praying? Or do you keep praying? Do you keep seeking God? You have the power. Philippians chapter 4, verse 9, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. We have the ability to impact people's lives in a way we never have before. When we understand the incredible greatness of God's power in us. And I encourage you, put it into action in your life. Put God's power that he has given you, make it active 
in your life. I've already said it, but I'm going to say it again. If you are a Christian, you have that God-given dynamite power living in you. So do you realize the power that you have? Like the man with a dynamite in his basement, do you realize what you're sitting on? Do you realize what you're walking on? Do you realize what's there? And in his case, he couldn't put it to use. But in your case, you can. And I encourage you to put it into action in your life. And I will be praying, as Paul prayed, that we all would understand the incredible power that is living in us. And that we will put it into action in our lives. And I trust that you will join with me in that prayer. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you. You have given us dynamite power to do what you would have us to do, Lord. And I trust that we come to an understanding of the power that we have, the power that we have access to, Lord, and that we can begin putting it into action in our lives. Lord, when we see somebody sick that we don't hesitate to pray for them. Lord, no matter what the situation is, that we face it with prayer. We seek your face for guidance. And I thank you for that, Lord. Amen.